our discussion today is focusing on the pathway to parliamentary majority. We know that uh, currently there's some level of chaos. Some say it is a constitutional crisis, others say no, but put all of that aside and let's look at the nitty gritty of numbers. The parliament we have currently is sharply divided, but for one, making the NPP majority. So let's walk through the numbers. Roland is still with us. Wow. And very, as you can see, very interesting numbers. is a sharply divided parliament. We have uh, 137 for the NDC, 137 for the NDC. But for the Fomina seat, there was no clear majority. And now the conversation is who is majority in the mm. House. We'll <laughs> talk about all of that later. But this is the 2020 parliament as we have it their four-year tenure is about expiring mm. but when they entered in january 20 uh, so that's four years back so january 2020 this is how the seats in parliament was like then the conversation of specific regions that produced the most for mm. the ndc and, and the, the mpp NPP. And, and certainly, uh, that for the MPP, traditionally, we've established that. And so for a blue region like the Ashanti region, they currently hold 42 seats. The whole region, there are 47, 47 seats. seats. The NDC has three, and then we have an independent. But then, even that, uh, for me now, it's, it's a pure MPP constituency. He has four. And then there's one independent. So four plus one is five. Plus this, that's well, 47. So, so when, you, when you tend to do um, the analysis, you also get to find that for the core areas where you want the MPP to do well, they don't have a seat in OT region, which mm. is the only region where they have no seat at all. At all. And that's why it's there. But then it's a newly carved out region from the Volta region. And they, they've been making a lot of inroads in there, thinking uh, or hoping that they'll do very well. The now, more reason why the vice president and the current flag bearer of the party, has been to the OT That's region. True. He was there, he truncated his true. campaign tour. Went to the Tepa like, areas, exactly. Abotwase, many Very of those areas, and the message. Then. But it's also because there's a social cultural link of the people. They, 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 they are, uh, it's a Guan speaking, yeah, yes. but traditionally also have more affinity they, to the Ashantis. They are, to the Ashantis. Yes. They are more Akan in terms of their scope, etc. Mm. Where the NDC has um, the, the most seats, is the greater Accra region. Right. You, you, you look at the average of what the observations have been, what the numbers have been, what the data uh, have been when we're talking about collecting from a demographic or a sample, whether it's global info analytics or the various um, posters. Uh, posters as we have, the, the, the greater Accra region has become a potpourri of, of, of many people. You'll find that those in the Volta region, because of a lack of economic empowerment, no jobs availability, they tend to do a lot of migration into greater Accra. Mm. And there's also the explanation from Musa Dankwe's Glo uh, Global Info Analytics Survey indicating that we have more people either closer from the central region, uh, a little of the eastern region, mm. uh, and then you have more of the Volta region who for the last election did not go back to their regions to go and vote because there was COVID. Mm. And so they registered or transferred their votes here subsequently, whether young and people, etc. And, and so the NDC seems to be having an upper hand in the greater Accra region. Mm. And once it is a cosmopolitan area, standard of living issues, bread and butter issues, and we're just talking about Trump winning, economy is, is, a, is, a, is a basis yeah, a for that. For so the projection is that even though they have the lowest of the seats in the Ahafo, or the northeast regions, they could also marginally increase their seats here, depending on what the message is, how they are able to get in touch with a lot of the voters in there. But mind you, you go to many of the uh, Okainkwe areas and, and you find more core MPP uh, voters People there. So there, yeah. th th that's uh, the, the explanation we're told. And, and that's how we are having the seats being projected and then being observed into, into, into this election in yes, 20... And, and probably just a, a quick one mm. on this. Uh, the Greater Accra region also has the highest voter population True. and the highest voter... Apart population. from Ashanti. Yes, after... It's the Ashanti first, is, Ashanti, Ashanti is the second. second. And so for the NDC to be able to marshal this number of votes in the 2020 elections tells you how un, uh, unpredictable mm. the, the Greater Accra region mm. is because mm. you would have thought that because of the... The, the, the diverse nature of the voting population, mm. it should have been split down the middle. But it was a decisive victory for the NDC that they won the majority parliamentary seats. However, 
if you look at the presidential elections in the greater Accra region as well, the NDC won, but did not win the national election, exactly. did not form the exactly. government. Exactly. It also shows that greater Accra is not the ultimate decider for you. As and, of and, now and, and, and if you look at the projections also, and then the data they are picking, we're having a shift in terms of the grounds of which regions will give you which more of the seats. Mm. That is on voting day, the projections are coming, the results are coming, and you think you're, you're winning from a number of seats. So it means you have to go more into Ashanti, Eastern region, convince voters to be able to. Look, projections so far are indicating that the safe seats for both parties have been indicated, clear yeah. cut. Yeah. So for the MPP, we have 276 seats now, because now we have constituencies with Guan in addition, 276. Yeah. What the MPP can bank their hopes on now and say that when we go and sleep, we can say that we can win a seat in the next parliament, which will be the ninth parliament, 96 seats. 96 and for the MP safe seats for the And MPP. for the MPP, that's safe. 96, 96 seats based on data that's been collected mm. on the ground, mm. projections. Mm. For the NDC, they are not lucky at all. They have to work. <laughs> And make sure they convince, okay. get into the nooks and cranny, make sure they sell their policies because let's say they do nothing else and they, they, they want to go to bed and sleep. They only get 82 seats. Hmm. So then the rest become toss ups. Yes. So who is able to get there, convince hmm. people, how the candidates from both sides are able to influence people, hmm. how influential they are and when it comes to political marketing, social marketing, et cetera, top of the mind awareness, when voters are undecisive, they go to the polls, who do they remember to say that, look, maybe I think I should go for this the last minute. Yeah. And so that means that for 96 for MPP being blue and then for 82 being green seats. And we can also, the reason why this is the projection is that these polls are from the numbers of the 2020 elections and we are looking at seats that they won comfortably with wider margins and of all the 275 96 of them and now you're saying 276 Six, because so, of guan because of the guan mm. constituency as the the data from the 2020 elections shows that there are some constituencies that the ndc the mpp won with wider margins and it's very likely to remain so. And that is why we are projecting that 96 seats will be safe for the MPP. Same way, 82 seats by the NDC won in 2020 were, were won by wider margins. And it will be difficult for mm. the MPP to either claw or take any of those 82 seats back. Mm. So they are safe seats mm. for the NDC as well. Mm. However, we have 276. <laughs> if you subtract this from 276, the remaining is what we call the toss-ups or the undecided uh, constituencies. Already, we have members of parliament in those constituencies, the ones that are not clearly NDC or MPP. There are MPs. The concern here is that, or our, our, our pointer here is that, those constituencies pair the numbers the margins were very close, so it could be an NDC seat, but it won by, and of course, our parliamentary system is first past the post. So if even we are 10 and you win by one vote, you are the MP for the area. The, the margins were so slim that we cannot say it is going to remain an MP, yeah. NDC seat yeah. or an MPP seat. That is why we are leaving those ones as hangy. Now, these are some of the seats that are contentious or up for grabs in the Ashanti region. Mm. Although they are in the Ashanti region, they are not guaranteed seats for the MPP. And we have Ahafwano North, Ahafwano Southwest, uh, Kimwamponia, New Edubiasi, mm. Offensive North, and Setra Framplains. Mm. Some of these have been won by the NDC and MPP, or currently being held by NDC or MPP. Mm. But we are projecting that they are the probability of them changing color when we go to the polls are high. That is why we've not given it to either party. Fantastic. And, and these are extrapolations from average data that has been collected by the various uh, polling agencies that we have currently in Ghana. And so you find that from the 2020 result, you, the, 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 the just a margin of just in excess 2,000 votes. Mm in favor of um, the NDC when it comes to the new Edu Biase constituency. Which is So that member of parliament region. today just won by 2048. So uh, th th that also speaks 
to the bigger issue about when it comes to the Ashanti region and which ones could be among the toss-up. Because you take a look at this and you'll find that New Edubiasi is the exception Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Offenso North, Setrafan Plains, Ekriman Punya, Ahafuano South, West, Ahafuano North. We, the projections are now that, apart from New Edubiasi, these ones are not MPP. Yes. But you speak to the voters, the prospective voters, and they tell you, we want these conditions to be met. If the conditions are met, then, then it means we that we go all out for you. And so for a blue region like the Ashanti region, these are the toss-up areas and mm. the ramification that we can give. For, this, uh, for the Setra Front Plains, it's just a win by 156. Right. That would mean that, I mean, no matter what you and, do, and that is why they, re they remain toss-up. So like you indicated, the new Adubiasi constituency, the NDC has won. It is safely sat in the Ashanti region, which we know is predominantly MPP. However, the MPP has struggled to win it. Mm. They've only won it once since 96. Yeah. And it tells you that the NDC seems to be comfortable there. Yeah. However, we are saying that based on the total number of vote difference mm. between the NPP and the NDC in the last elections, there is a possibility that if the NPP are minded, considering the fact that, one, they've chosen their vice presidential candidate from the Ashanti region, who has promised to deliver 85% of national regional votes for the party, if they push and put in the effort, they are likely to turn the new ADBS seat. A, a huge, huge toss-up. Yeah. And, 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 and based on what the numbers are, we're told that um, these demographics in the, in the areas, etc., from Plains and then also new ADBS, you have a lot of uh, Muslim migrants, people nothing, nothing dominated uh, people also there. So, mm. And you have a candidate from, um, from the northern regions, so to speak, for both parties. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know. So, so, so both so, candidates so, are from so, northern So who the candidate is is very important. How they're able to interact with the people is very, is, is very important, Martin. Pretty much interesting finalities there. So you're still watching Election 360. Let's uh, find out what exactly is happening on the campaign trail because we've just taken you through some of the regional dynamics and constituency uh, issues that could decide which way they go.